Hey Cool World, this week it's the NASA Kepler Science Conference being held at NASA Ames headquarters in California. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it, but two Cool World's lab members, Emily Sanford and Ruth Angus, are both there right now giving talks about their research. We haven't quite finished writing up those projects, but as soon as we have, you can be sure that we will tell you about them here on the Cool World's channel. Now, there have been a couple of interesting news stories coming out of the conference. I wanted to tell you about them here. The first of which is that there are 219 new planetary candidates discovered by Kepler. But, you know, Kepler's kind of a victim of its own success because 219 new planetary candidates is great, but it kind of pales into insignificance compared to the thousands of planetary candidates that Kepler has discovered in the past. It's actually pretty awesome though that we live in a time where the discovery of 219 new planetary candidates isn't really a big deal and it doesn't make headlines. We're just used to discovering so many planets now. But what has been grabbing headlines is the announcement by NASA that 10 of these planetary candidates are near Earth size and in the habitable zone of their host star. And don't get me wrong, this is genuinely exciting. But, you know, we should also not get too carried away because this is not, for example, the confirmation of 10 planets which are known to be habitable. Well, why not? Well, first off, these are not confirmed planets, just planetary candidates at this point. So, you know, don't go packing your bags just yet. But even putting that to the side, let's ask the question of how habitable we really think these planets may be. When astronomers say habitable, what we really mean is that they are capable of supporting surface liquid water. And you can see that here, that the new planetary candidates broadly fall into the green zone where we expect the temperatures to allow this to happen. However, you can also see that some are better than others with 7882 and 7706 looking closer to Venus than really the Earth. But that's not the whole story though because if you took Jupiter and the Earth for example and swapped them over in position around the Sun, we wouldn't call Jupiter a habitable planet. The planet has to be solid in order to have a surface and whether a planet is solid or not depends crucially on its size. Here's the 10 planetary candidates to scale where I've painted each planet with a color representing how much warmth it receives from its host star, what we call insulation. You can see that there's a great deal of uncertainty about the planetary sizes, but even so, several here look to be too large in order to be rocky. You might remember from earlier work here at the Cool Worlds Lab with Jing Jing Chen that we find the transition from rocky to gaseous planets happens at about one and a half Earth radii. So for my money, these three planetary candidates look to be the most promising and perhaps deserve special attention. Now this transition from rocky to gaseous planets is a fickle one. After all, it's probably not a sharp boundary with exceptions either side of the rule. Nevertheless, this boundary is clearly giving us clues about planet formation and how many Earth-like planets might really be out there. In fact, in my opinion, the most impactful result that was announced at the recent Kepler meeting was on this exact issue in a new paper led by Ben Fulton and his colleagues of the California Kepler survey team. This team have been using the Keck telescope over the last few years now to observe stars known to harbor planetary systems discovered by Kepler. By using one of the largest telescopes on the planet and patiently building up high quality spectra for each of these stars, the team have been able to derive much more precise stellar sizes for each of these objects. Now because the transit method only tells us the relative size of a planet compared to its parent star, then ultimately how well we know the size of a planet is usually dominated by how well we know the size of the star. Know the star, know the planet. So if we make a histogram, which is a kind of bar chart of the number of planets found at different sizes, you can see that the previous data doesn't really show anything interesting happening at around this one and a half Earth radii transition point. Each star and thus each planet typically has a measurement error on its size of something like 40% way too coarse for us to see any fine detail in a plot like this. But the new California results push that error all the way down to 11%, allowing us to see detail and structure that was previously hidden in the same plot. This huge gap right in the middle here occurs right around the rocky to gaseous transition as measured by the Cool Worlds Lab and indeed others. And this strongly suggests that it is indeed a dividing line between those regimes. Now, astronomers are so excited about this that they're already calling it the Fulton Gap after the lead author of this paper. Maybe it's a bit less catchy, but we might also call it the Californian break. 
in order to, I guess, credit all you the astronomers who helped make this discovery possible. So what do you think about this name? Do you have a better suggestion for what we should call this gap? Does this gap even deserve a name? Let me know down below in the comments section on this video. So I'll put some links down below in the description where you can read more about these exciting new discoveries. Also, several of our projects here at the Coolwoods Lab are getting really close to completion, including our exomoon work. So if you want to make sure you're the first person to hear about those results, then do make sure you click the subscribe button down below and you'll be sure to hear about those hopefully in the next few weeks. So thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. If you have any questions about these discoveries or the Kepler mission in general, then do be sure to put them down below in the comment section and I'll get back to you. So until the next video, stay thoughtful and stay curious. are near Earth size and in a habitable zone of their host star. Habitable. Why can't I say habitable? Habitable. Habitable, habitable, habitable. Are near Earth size and in the habitable zone. <laughs> habitable zones. <laughs> oh my god, I hate that word.